in uh, 1969, uh, I was either preparing for gr gr going to graduate school or in graduate school. Uh, the Apollo program affected me in that it, it added to an already existing uh, uh, need that I felt personally that I needed to get uh, as much education as I possibly could. Uh, uh, the way that the Apollo program affected me is that uh, I was in awe of, of the people that were involved in the moon landing. And um, uh, I, I could see that uh, uh, the activity surrounding that uh, had required a, an awful lot of, uh, of expertise and competence, dedication, um, uh, a lot of courage, and, uh, and, and uh, capability. I, I, I just realized that uh, uh, in order to be a part of something like that, and I didn't anticipate that I ever would, uh, but uh, if I ever did want to be a part of something like that, I would have to have as much education as I possibly could get. And so, uh, but being from, from the uh, uh, Detroit, which had just uh, been rioting and where we had been in these discussions already about the need for education, uh, that that feeling was there, but uh, but observing the moon landing enhanced it within me uh, considerably. That, uh, that that there was an awful lot of technical competence that uh, that I would have to try to live up to. Um, the moon landing I, I probably indirectly inspired me uh, to to continue on the study. I there were other things that had inspired me prior to to the moon landing. The moon landing sort of added to uh, something I thought was a, a, a great need. I felt that, uh, uh, particularly as a black man in the United States, uh, there was a deficit in uh, technical uh, uh, people who were performing uh, technically, uh, scientifically, uh, that, that, and I, I felt that I, I thought I had a responsibility, since I felt I did have the, the capacity to, uh, to do science, I had a responsibility to do as far as I could Good. Good. The perspective of most African Americans was not so much, you know, are we violent or are we nonviolent? That wasn't the issue. Uh, uh, the issue was more or less uh, trying to gain a modicum of respect, uh, trying to get uh, somewhere uh, uh, is, uh, in terms of education, uh, in terms of uh, uh, income in terms of just being able to survive. Uh, and, violence was not something I certainly wasn't aligned with, but um, uh, uh, it was not something that was, was, was totally uh, out, out of the picture because violence, we felt, was a part of the uh, scene generally anyway. I mean, it was violence coming from all directions, uh, either from uh, uh, just from the general uh, social fabric uh, where people were generally felt violently oppressed in terms of not being able to survive. And uh, then there was the whole self-defense aspect of should I defend myself or not. So violence was more or less interwoven into the uh, fabric of the, of the uh, society. Uh, as a, uh, as a uh, philosophy, as a uh, uh, sort of as a, um, a mechanism of, uh, of uh, moving ahead, the nonviolent philosophy of Martin Luther King was, of course, extremely correct. I mean, it was uh, it was a uh, one way of uh, of suffering uh, without responding, and I think that sort of uh, awakened uh, uh, the United States conscious. On the other hand, uh, uh, the uh, self defense uh, uh, teachings of people like Malcolm X at the time was was uh, uh, something that was was being taught to or spoken to American, black Americans uh, in terms of uh, uh, maintaining their manhood or standing up for what they believed in, but not going out and doing things, but uh, more or less protecting themselves. So, and, you know, as, as a country, uh, uh, we, we as a country believe in self-defense. And so that, that kind of thinking, I thought, was, was not even germane to the whole subject, uh, other than we, we all want the country to be held together. No one believes... We, we don't want anarchy. We don't want people to go around being violent. But uh, I thought the arguments uh, of the discussion got lost in the nonviolent versus violent. The real discussion was human rights versus 
uh, suffering and uh, that sort of thing. That was, that's where the arguments uh, should have been, and not necessarily nonviolent versus violent. So I thought, I think that that was kind of a moot, moot point. So I never did address the issue of violence versus nonviolence. On the one hand, it was quite uh, uh, frightening. I felt a little bit insulated. Being a student in 1969 at, at Rutgers uh, was uh, at, at times uh, uh, somewhat disturbing. Uh, uh, it's not quite frightening, but somewhat disturbing. But the atmosphere uh, in 1969, uh, uh, where the, when you know, much of the protestations against the war were really becoming, uh, were really quite uh, pronounced. Um, my uh, uh, perspective was that uh, 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 my colleagues, uh, I, I could feel some of the uh, uh, fear, uh, some of the uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, not knowing what the future was, was going to be like among some of these colleagues. I, I could feel some of that. I, I cared about some of these people. And uh, so I, I could feel, I could empathize with, with them. Through them, I had a certain amount of fear about the future. Uh, whether or not there was going to be uh, a future. For me, I, th I felt fairly secure as long as I was able to, to succeed in, in my studies. But uh, as far as um, uh, my compatriots was concerned, they were in and out. Some of them were involved in the protests, the campus protests. Uh, in some cases, they weren't uh, uh, probably studying their cumulative exams, which prepares them for, uh, for their degree. Uh, which, which qualifies them for the degree and, and in some cases not passing their exams on time. There was, so there was a certain amount of doubt uh, uh, with respect to these fellows in terms of, on the one hand, whether they were going to be around long enough to, to uh, complete their, their degrees. And uh, because of the draft, they were going to be able to successfully pass their coursework because they were involved in, uh, in protest and so on. Uh, being on, in graduate school, we didn't see as much of that Although we did see quite a bit of it in my office, there were students that came through, uh, but it wasn't qu as heavy, heavily concentrated in a graduate office as it would have been in an undergraduate office. But uh, there was definitely an air of, uh, of, uh, of uh, fear and uh, uncertainty. Uh, many of the students were subject to the, to the draft. I myself was insulated from that. I had already served my time in the military. And um, uh, so I could concentrate pretty much on, on my studies. But there were some fellows who were uh, subject to the draft and uh, who were in the lottery and who, uh, um, who needed uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, concentrate on their studies on the one hand, but on the other hand, uh, who were, they, they were opposed to the war. Although there were some that were not opposed to the war, uh, those that were opposed to the war felt that they had to express that opposition. And uh, 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 they were uncertain about their futures because of uh, the possibility of being of going away to the military. And uh, on the one hand, also uh, uncertain about their futures from the uh, standpoint of not putting enough time into their studies and preparing for the necessary qualifying exams. And so there was a, a considerable amount of apprehension and uncertainty. Although this was a graduate school, uh, and it wasn't as concentrated in our area as it was in the undergraduate part of the university, although the whole campus was generally uh, embroiled in some form of protest. Uh, without the Apollo program, we would not have be able to, to do the routine science that we're capable of doing today uh, in, in, uh, in microgravity. We can, uh, uh, the mission that I was mission scientist for, for example, and not just that one, the USMP, uh, the USML, all of them have, have done routine science. They've uh, been able to uh, launch routinely, grow crystals, uh, to uh, uh, grow, grow uh, protein crystals that, were, uh, uh, that gave much better resolution than uh, the, the crystals that are uh, currently uh, uh, grown on the ground, some of them. Uh, not all of them, but uh, some of them, a great percentage of them, uh, gave much better resolution, which allows uh, drug design, uh, pharmaceutical drug design, and a much uh, uh, higher percentage of drugs can be uh, produced. Uh, crystal growth of semiconductors, where the defect densities 
you know, we're trying to miniaturize these. Uh, uh, we're talking about miniaturization, miniaturization of all of these components, electronic components and photonic components and, uh, uh, and, 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 and computers and so on. Uh, we'd like to minimize the amount of defects. Well, on the ground, we do processing. Uh, your uh, defect densities are, are fairly high in crystal growth. If you can, uh, we know that certain fluid flows and, and uh, those uh, uh, types of convective effects that, that take place uh, on the ground are, are generally absent in microgravity. Uh, when we come, to, when we say microgravity, we're talking about one millionth of the gravity uh, uh, on, uh, that we experience here on the ground. Uh, we, we have these very small flows, and, and we can minimize on the minimize the uh, defect densities. And so we're talking about miniaturization. Then that says that most of our material is going to be very good uh, for electronics and photonic applications. And so uh, without the Apollo program, uh, without the ability to launch routinely, we would not have these data points. Uh, we would not have these. Uh, uh, this information, combustion, we know how combustion works now much better than we ever did. Uh, we've seen uh, how things like surface tension driven convection works, uh, that is without the influence of buoyancy forces. Uh, we've seen how many things work uh, uh, in microgravity environment as a result of being able to, uh, to leave the, uh, the uh, confines of this gravitational field that we're in. And so the Apollo uh, uh, program was uh, extremely important in, in giving us this launch capability uh, and then uh, to permit us to do science in, in microgravity. I, I would say just an unbelievable accomplishment. I, I feel that it was true then and it's true the, now. The care, uh, the dedication and the uh, uh, commitment, the, um, uh, just the uh, courage that it took to uh, uh, not just the guy, people that flew, but the people who uh, did the calculations and said that these numbers have to work, or we're going to lose all these people, we're going to lose all these equipment, and you know my neck is on the line, and so on. Uh, it was a remarkable accomplishment.